and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got a little bit of Stephen A. Alphabet Soup. Yeah, Stephen Alphabet Soup. A. Smith. The Alphabet Soup. A. Smith. Anyway, he is not something he want to say. I am not talking about you. I'm talking about the youngsters breath smelling like Similac went behind the ears. Those people. And I mean that affectionately to you youngsters. I want you to hear me and hear me good. Because I'm going to pause. And I'm going to alarm you with what I'm, going, I'm about to say. But I want you to listen. Racism doesn't exist. It doesn't. It sure don't. Obviously, I'm lying. You better believe he is. Of course it you better believe it does. Yes, it does. See, you don't have to go to the back of the bus. Wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Do you hear what he just said? He said to the youngsters that they don't have to go to the back of the bus. No, no, no. But they still have to ride a bus. Can't get a car. Now, hold on now. You don't have, you're not denied the opportunity to eat at restaurants. May not be denied the opportunity to eat at a restaurant, but they denied the opportunity to own a restaurant. Hold on now. Or to enter nightclubs or to patronize businesses. You no, they can go into a nightclub as long as they shaking a rump or they putting dollars in G-strings. They can go to nightclubs as long as the clubs they go to it's those after-hour clubs downtown or those raves, but they can't go to the golf clubs. Can I get an amen? You have the right to go. You're not being lynched. You're not being hung. Not being lynched and not being hung, but being choked out in the middle of the street. Does anybody remember Mr. Gunn? Does anybody remember Mr. Floyd? Or they're being shot in the middle of the street because they're walking in the middle of the street. Or something else entirely. Now, hold on, y'all. Y'all don't understand. I was watching another video in the background, and this was the 9-11 loose change video. And it was on pause. I apologize because it was refreshing. Oh, it's so refreshing to watch that. But let's get back to Mr. Smith because Mr. Smith doesn't want to go to Hollywood. Mr. Smith doesn't want to say Christmas. Mr. Smith wants to say that these are different times. And Mr. Smith doesn't understand that even though times have changed, the progress has been minimum to say the least. Mr. Smith, do you want to go ahead and finish educating us? You're not going through the trials and tribulations your ancestors, recent and far beyond recent, endured so you can sit here today. Wait, hold on here, son. Hold on. You're talking to a black college. They had black colleges back then. They had them in Africa. They taught their own people. So that, 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 that's nothing change. You said they're not being lynched. Again, they are being lynched. That they're not going through the trials and tribulations that the parents went through. You're wrong. You're, you're wrong about that. They're going through the exact same trials and tribulations. It's a different time, but it's the same, same old scene. You've heard it's the same old song. But just a different thing since you've been gone. Okay, it is the same. Yes, to what they went through back then, we should not be going through what we're going through now. If there truly was progress, how come there is so much regress? Hmm? Now, mind you, ladies and gentlemen, don't get me wrong. I like Kenny Smith. The man is hilarious. And, and, you know, because... He does, in many ways, tell things the way he feels. Nobody should be getting on his case about saying that a baseball player is getting so much praise and everything because he's from Japan when 
there was so much effort to get somebody into a baseball league who was from Cleveland or somebody into a football league who was from Washington. You follow me? That's what he was talking about, but everybody focused on the fact that he was talking about somebody who can't speak a language, even though the baseball player he was talking about can speak a language. Now, I don't know the baseball player, and I am partial to Asians. I love the Asian Orient community. I love their culture. So I have nothing against the young man. I don't know him. I've never seen him play. And the fact that he made it to the major leagues, hey, by all means, good for him. But Kenny G. Smith, Kenny A. Smith, wasn't, I said G. Smith, Kenny G. Anyway, Stephen A. Smith was not talking about the person's race. He was talking about the fact that you have individuals of color who are only made to achieve based upon certain criteria. Okay, now mind you, that's a step up for people who are Asian Orient descent. Why? Because remember, they were put in concentration camps here in this country. Or did you guys forget about that? In both world wars, if you were Asian, concentration camp, here we come. If you were Asian, you weren't put in a black ghetto, you were put in a town. Either China, Korea, you follow me? And, 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 and hey, hold on. Didn't matter if you were Japanese, you were still put in China or Korea town. Because in America, I can't tell ones of you from another. That's America to people who are of Asian Korean descent. Taiwanese, same thing. China or Korea town. Okay, so yes, they have been oppressed too. Why? Because America was founded on racism. Wait, wait, hold on. Y'all 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 don't y'all don't understand me, do you? We came over, took over somebody's when I say we, I'm speaking generally. Remember about that guy? Generally? Came over and took over somebody else's land, somebody else's house, somebody else's territory, and we said, We're gonna allow y'all to live here, but y'all gonna pay us rent. And when we tell y'all to move, you're going to ask us, how fast do you want us to move? Is yesterday fast enough? That's what America did. America the beautiful. It is so beautiful how they continue to run the same game. What did they do? They go over into Afghanistan because they needed to increase the American debt. And they did it for 20 years putting us so much in debt that doesn't matter how many hour style money orders or A for B's people do, we ain't coming out of that debt. They saw what I was doing when I did $680 trillion, $480 trillion, $620 trillion, five of them money orders to the United States Department of the Treasury. Let me let you guys know, all in my name, sent to the Department of the Treasury, put in court cases, I promise you, Thousands of money orders written by me. And ain't nobody come knocking on my door for no stupid money order. I dared them, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I did it in court the very first day when they brought me in. The very first day before that stupid magistrate, Marcos Lopez. Very first thing I did was grab the piece of paper and say, let me borrow something. I need something to write. I got to write something down. I wrote the money order and I handed it to that mother idiot. What's this? What does it look like? Well, it says it's a money order, but then that's what it is, mother, you know? That was the conversation. Remember it to this day, and that was 2012, December 28th. Can tell you the day it happened. Puerto Rico. Did anybody say this is fraudulent? You're going to jail. You can't do this. Did anybody say anything like that? No, the idiot said. The court notes it and files it into the record. They never brought it up again. So I filed about 18 more of them up into the record. Even had somebody send it to me on bond paper, typed up and everything. They ain't said a word. So when you guys do it, you get in trouble because you ain't did no research. I did research. No, you ain't did no research because you don't know why I'm doing it and why it worked. Hmm. Ain't that something? Hey, Kenny. Gee. 
Mr. Stephen A. Smith, could you please tell us what's going on? You older, you know I'm not talking about you. But youngsters, nobody's trying to hear that. You need to understand that white folks got problems too. Some of them can't pay their bills. Wait a minute. Do you think the young folks are only complaining Stephen A. Smith because they can't pay their bills? No, the young folks are complaining Stephen A. Smith is because society has treated them as if they're second class, third class, fourth class citizens. That they don't get to have the advantages that others have. That they still have to fight and struggle, but they have to fight and struggle even more. Why? Because their parents, pay attention, let me, let me say it again, their parent with the T, no S, their parent had to work. And they didn't have the time to spend time to bring that child up in the mental regulation discipline that's required, Mr. Smith. So these children had it worse because even those children whose parents were slaves or grew up in the 50s, and the mama was home, Stephen. Papa was home. Papa may have been a rolling stone, but he laid his hat. It was called home, Stephen. That's what I want to talk to you about, Mr. Stephen Smith. These children today grew up without Papa. And if Papa was home, Mama and Papa weren't home, Stephen. They were both working, trying to bring these children up. That's how they made it into a college to begin with, Stephen. So, Stephen, these children have a right to be complaining because they're saying my mother and father had to struggle. And while they were struggling, I was struggling too. So don't think that it wasn't a struggle for me. Don't think that the struggle is over, Stephen. That's what they're trying to tell you, Stephen. So, yes, you will listen to their complaints because they may have Similac on their mouths. But they also have the weight of the entire culture on their backs. That's right, Stephen. It's because of those individuals that you are talking to that black lives seem to matter a little bit more. Not because of the people before, but because of the people now, Stephen. There was no black lives matter in the 60s, 50s or 40s. Why are no Black Lives Matters in the 70s, 80s, or 90s? Go back and take a look. All of this stuff has been going on, Stephen. And it is only now that these youngsters are waking up and they're saying, look, hey, hold on, look, uh, 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 Mr. Boss Man, uh-uh, you may be the boss, but you ain't the king, you know what I'm saying? So, uh-uh, hold on now, son. You, you're just the owner of this place. You're not the owner of me. See, that's what the youngsters are doing now, Mr. Steven. The youngsters are saying, hey, I can create an app. And this app, I'm going to create. It's going to help millions of people. And I'm going to lift myself up, and I'm going to lift my people up with me. Steven, that's what the youngsters are doing. So I understand you're, you're trying to do a motivational speech. Everybody, Steve has been getting a lot of flack from people. And people didn't understand the context of what this young man was saying. He's trying to motivate these graduates. Stephen, you're doing a good job. I am here to put it in context because the moment this man said the word Similac, only the people who understood got it. I know what Similac is. He ain't talking about that type of Similac, moron. That's right. I, you heard me say more on the moment you speak up and say you understood when you didn't. You see, in the so-called African-American community or black culture, some of us used to say that people weren't old enough because we got this from our people who told us that we weren't old enough. We still had Similac on our milk. You know, we were still baby. We hadn't been weighing yet. Okay. I understood what Steve was saying. At the very moment he said that I understood, he was saying, look here, you ignorant mother. I'm not talking to you. Those of you who want to take this personal, shut up and leave it alone. So, Steve, I get you. It's the rest of the community that don't get you because they ain't from where you're from. 
See, that's why he could say several times, pay attention. Those of you who are older, I ain't talking to you. That, did you hear him? Those of you who understand, I understand that you understand, so this ain't for you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not trying to get a rise out of you. I'm trying to get a rise out of these youngsters that's in front of me. I'm talking to the young men. And if there are some women among them, hey, young ladies, I'm talking to you too. That's what Stephen is trying to say. Now, the media, when they heard this, everybody jumped off ship. Who? Man, they were headed for an iceberg. They thought that he had said something wrong, and they failed to understand the context and his audience. He understood who he was talking to. Come on, Steve. Some of them are struggling. Some of them are being denied opportunities. And you need to understand that because when people are going through their own problems, they are not going to lament what your trials and tribulations are. Because the mentality is, is that the obstacles that once existed are no longer those obstacles. The fact that there's a proverbial glass ceiling and there's favoritism and nepotism and all of these other isms that are taking place. That applies to them too in their world. So if they're going through that, how could they possibly be sensitive to your trials and tribulations? What Stephen has just said right there is the case in point. He says, hey, it's all perspective. It's all how you view it. And if you want to hold on to all of that negative, then that will hold you down. It's time for you to lift yourself up and move on beyond it. Can I get an amen? That's what he's trying to say, ladies and gentlemen. See, he's trying to motivate these youngsters. But people took what he said as if he was talking to the entire world, if he was talking to every single culture out there. And what he was trying to tell these youngsters is, hey, stop looking at everybody else. Focus on you. Stop being the boo-hoo or woe is me and start saying, you know what? I'm going to do something about it. You know what? I'm moving forward. I'm not looking backwards no more. That's what Mr. Smith was trying to do. I didn't hear the speech first. I heard the negative first, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I said. I heard the negative first, so I decided to download the speech because every time Mr. Smith say something, Stephen, every time you say something, somebody wants to say you put your foot in your mouth. Mr. Stephen, you haven't put your foot in your mouth not one time. Now, you want to apologize but you didn't apologize because of what you said. You apologized because of how it was taken. And you're just going to have to learn that you can't speak to America like you speak to your homie. Okay? Hey, no, 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 no. Hold on now. Y'all need to pay attention. I can't talk to you guys the way I would talk to my best friend. See, my best friend understood. We, we clicked. We got it but I can't talk to you guys like that. There are conversations I can have with somebody from my old hood, but I can't have with you guys. Why? Because it's a different culture. I would say things and you would get offended, but I'd say the same things to them and they don't get offended. There are people who know me and nothing I say will offend them. Why? Because they know I'm not trying to offend them. See, the people who really know me know that if I'm really trying to offend you, <laughs> I will demean you to such a level that you would be hurt. And then I would turn and walk away, leaving you with that stupid look on your face. But guess what? That's who I used to be. That's why I said if I was really trying, I would go back to who I used to be. But see, I'm no longer a babe. I'm no longer immature. I'm no longer a babe needing milk. I pressed on to more mature food, okay? I pressed on to more solid foods. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And by pressing on to such solid food, I can move on with my life. I don't have to worry about what John is over there thinking, or Mary, or, or Jill, or Rebecca, or Rachel, or, or Susan. You know, Susan, I like you and everything, but I, I can't hold on to how you feel. I got to move on with my own life. I got to move forward. That's what Stephen is trying to tell these youngsters, that they need to get to that point. 
instead of worrying about what everybody else because they social media they're worried about what everybody else is thinking he's trying to get them out of that mentality y'all need to pay attention to the young man understand where you're coming from go on steve let's see it let's see what else you got to say it doesn't mean that you don't have those experiences it means that we will not allow you to use it as an excuse because long before you get to anybody white hispanic or anything else you got your own brothers and sisters of an older generation that's gonna look at you and say what the hell are you complaining about handling you yeah, see what i'm saying i ain't heard the speech before y'all listening to it with me, I'm for the first time, some of y'all for the first time, others have heard it. How did I know this is where he was going? Because he's talking to people of his culture. He's not talking to America. The news media got hold of this and the news media decided to take it out of context. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are listening to me or anyone else, don't listen to our words. Listen to the context of the conversation. You see, that's what the courts do. The courts are very good at taking things out of context and running with it. Okay? Taking things out of context. I tell people, I am here to help. I had a young man contact me. Ladies and gentlemen, he contacted me. They're getting ready to be foreclosed on. They have until the 28th before they start foreclosure proceedings. So I asked him, have you done a QWR? He said, no. It's because of that young man in the conversation this morning that you and I and all of you were redoing the QWR contract that's on our website. That QWR contract, form of dispute, debt dispute, the first things we do in this QWR, the first things for you all to understand, let's, uh, let's increase the font so you guys can see what's going on here. I'm gonna do a video on it in a moment. Right after I do this video, I'll be doing a video on this because I got a meeting in an hour. Okay, about an hour and a half. But I'll be doing a video on this. I want you all to pay attention. Please understand that according to the terms of our agreement, the prior agreement with the lender, and you're presenting us with your, place the name of the creditor here, new terms. We conditionally accept your offer. They want to foreclose on your property. That's another offer. You never agreed that they could foreclose on your property using the foreclosure, the non-debt, uh, excuse me, the non-judicial foreclosure act. You never agreed to that. Go back and look. You agreed that could foreclose if you didn't pay off the loan, if it was a secured loan. But if, in order for them to foreclose, they have to go through a lawsuit. They can't go through a lawsuit. That's not a secured loan. Secured loan means they can use the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act. An unsecured loan means I, I, I ain't agreed to that. So we accept your offer under the following terms and conditions. Consequently, the remaining question is whether foreclosure on a mortgage constitute a debt collection activity for the purpose of the Fair Debt Collection Act. Foreclosure proceedings are deemed debt collections activity. Here's the case, 2015. Okay, they cite a case from 2014. Who cites a case from 2013? Foreclosure meets the broad definition of debt collection under the FDCPA. Foreclosure, although legal in nature, is activity undertaken for the general purpose of inducing payment. A debt collector cannot avoid the FDCPA liability simply be by proceeding in REM, in venue only, rather than in persona. So non-judicial foreclosure rather than civil action, where the person has the right to be present and to confront their accuser. Therefore, the purpose of this action you are acting as a debt collector and engaged in debt collection activities when you communicated with the plaintiff and filed a foreclosure action. So we're going to change plaintiff. We're going to bracket S bracket. Oh, I'm sorry, bracket. <laughs> you with us and filed the foreclosure action. Okay, you are to provide a complete accounting. Now, signed under penalty of perjury. Why? Because verification, a legal definition means a de declaration swearing the statements made in the document are true. Well, this, uh, what is it? Uh, 
give me one second. We we don't want I because it's G, but we're gonna do this. Come on, copy. Uh, yeah. That then we're gonna do this. And then we will do, okay, see how that works? Attesting to the amount of expenditures and costs so that I may redeem my property. You have the right to redeem your property, ladies and gentlemen. You have the right to redeem your property. You have the right to ask for an accounting for redemption. Go ahead and look at the redemption right in your state. Now, a lot of states don't recognize redemption rights because they don't want to recognize y'all. But you can make them recognize, okay? Didn't mean to do that. I'm trying to uh, bring this back down because it ain't where it's supposed to be. So we ain't trying to hide nothing. We want the whole menu. Got the whole menu in his hands. He's got the whole menu. Anyway, so that's what we're trying to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do a whole video on this. We're going to put this doc. It ain't up now. Don't ask nobody for it. It ain't up now. I will put it up. I'll do the video. You will see where it's going to be uploaded. We're even going to talk about UCC, Article 9, Section 203. We're going to talk about that, what that particular code says. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand this code. Okay? You need to understand UCC, Article 9. Okay, I need to get rid of that dash. That dash ain't supposed to be there. So UCC Article 9 dash 203. We're going to put subsection 203. Okay, the reason why we put that subsection there because that talks about the fact that these idiots, pay attention, these idiots are claiming that you owe a debt. Well, how could you owe a debt? They're claiming that you own the collateral. You own the collateral? How could I own the collateral? Well, here is the attachment part. Again, we're going to talk about all of this in a moment. We really, 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 really are going to talk about all this in a moment in another video. All right? So this is just me letting you know about building people up and how when I do videos, it's for specific purposes. I told you it's teaching techniques. That's all that's being demonstrated here. Every single video. But, again, people like to take things out of context. Well, I don't do the out of context thing. I take things in their context. I have people sending me case laws all the time saying this law says this, this law says that. And when I read the law, the plain and simple meaning of that legalese doesn't say anything what they're saying it says. And I, I don't bother to explain it to them because they won't get it because their mind is already set on the law. I had somebody tell me about a particular law. And when I went to the law, I had to write them back and say, hey, uh, this doesn't say what you said it said. This is talking about this. You can see it right here because of this statement. So, Kenny, I'm, I keep calling him Kenny, y'all. And the reason why I keep calling him Kenny is because I had a friend who remind, he reminds me of. So that young man's name was Kenny. So that's why. Go ahead, Mr. Stephen A. Smith. That's all excuses. This is the real world. And you better understand it. You better grasp it. Why are ethics, why are ethics so important? Because it's about dollars. We don't want to admit it. We don't want to acknowledge it. We don't want to embrace it. But it's reality. Ladies and gentlemen, the young man was all, all about being right. There was nothing that this man said that was wrong in that speech. But you go ahead and you listen to the people who criticized him. Yeah, I have a meeting uh, consult that I just did that's recording. The people who criticized him, ooh, doggy. As if he didn't kill somebody's cat, shoot their dog, and walk over their broken toe that wasn't even in the calf. That's what they sound like. They sound like he done sat up there and killed somebody. None of that has happened at all.
but that's the way Mr. Smith was treated for speaking to a specific group, bringing across specific information. That is a shame. And don't worry about it. I've had people do me the same way because they don't understand the context of my videos. That's why I said my videos are designed for my people. My people know who they are. You know, the young man that I just spoke to, just did the consult with, he and I just spoke for the first time on Saturday. We spoke for an hour. And then I spoke with he and his relative. I'm not going to say which relative. I'm just going to say he and his relative for two hours and 30 minutes this morning. One consult. And I gave him my word on Saturday. I said, uh-uh, you don't pay me anymore after this. This that, that payment is for my time, people. For my time. And I stayed with them until they understood what their rights were. Until they understood case text and what the courts were saying. That was our conversation. I told them, this ain't, there ain't no quick fixes to mortgages. You have to know what you're saying and what you're saying to the judge. The judge needs to know you know what you're talking about. They don't need to see no motion. They need to know you know what you're talking about. So the QWR is what he's getting. Why? Because these are the points that he needs to bring up now. This QWR cannot be ignored. Why? Because he's speaking about redemption. Hey, I want to pay off my house. You, you want to know something that this QWR does? This QWR deals with one particular issue. We're going to talk about it, but it deals with one particular issue. I hope it's up here. No, that's the independently corporation thing. Um, that the homeowner did not actually own a collateral. Well, if I didn't own the collateral, you can't do nothing. The only thing you guys can do is take me to court. Bring me to court. Now, the reason why we bring that up is because, you know, when you're doing a non-judicial foreclosure, the, there has to be value in the contract. They have to have offered something of value. Well, of course they didn't. Treasury says that that junk has no value. Well, non-judicial foreclosure act says that it has to have value. They don't get to just sit up there and just give you something and they got no value. I'm so glad you guys understand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me take the time to speak to you about race relations. That's right. This is all about race relations. And if you believe that, then that means you don't get nothing that's being said on any of my videos, which means you shouldn't be listening to them. The young man who I told you about on Saturday, he found my videos. Why? Because he had already tried everything else. Everybody that he went to <laughs> all the things that he was trying, it all came from my videos. He didn't know about me. He didn't know that I'm the one who gave those people that information. They even gave him one of our contracts to send to his bank. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't mind you using the stuff that I say because I encourage it. I encourage you to take what I say and make it your own. But you don't have all the steps and you're not doing all the research. See, most of the stuff they were telling him was only limited by their knowledge, as opposed to them doing the research, calling up and asking the questions. Let me tell you guys, you, you want to know the best way to get information from corporations and companies? You call them and you say, look, I'm doing some research, or I'm trying to do this, or I'm looking to do this type of business. What do you think, what would be the best, best place to start? You know the same thing people be calling me and asking me where's the best place to start? Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know the best place to start with anything associated with any of this, let me give you the best place to start. This is a document. This is a straw man document. I apologize that it ain't pulling up. This is the straw man. That's him right there. This is a straw man document. It's on our website. Okay? Proof that there is a straw man. I even did a video on it. We're going to be doing another video on it because we got a lot to talk about about this document. But this is on the SEDM website. Okay? SE, the Sovereign Education and Defense Ministry. SEDM.org. Just go there and type in straw man. Okay? And this document is there. Now, we're going to do a video on this document, ladies and gentlemen, because this document is so important. S-E-D-M, do a lot of good work, y'all. I'm not joking about that. I don't agree with everything, but I agree with the fact that they are trying and they put this information out there. And this don't cost y'all nothing. 
You can download it. It's free. But the fact that they took the time to give you each one of these points in an outline form, you want to know what's going on? You want to know uh, about the straw man and about the civil authorities and about all of what's going on and what they've done and what they haven't done and about corporate franchises? Oh, comparison of a person and a U.S. person. Hey, they do all of that for you. The only problem is you have to do the research into the information. You can't just run off of what they say. That ain't going to That ain't gonna work. Now look, okay, Veterans Administration Benefit Application. They even give you links, people. I jokes with you and kids, which is not. They give you links to the documents in the form. We're putting this form up there. They even let you, I click on one of the links. YouTube video links work. Okay? This form is your form. This form is your form. This line is my form. From New York Island to another California. To the, okay, anyway, Family Guardian, okay, they give you links. There was a lot of work that went through this, ladies and gentlemen, so go ahead. It was revised 2017. Go ahead to their website. Download the form. Start, it's going to be on our site, but start going over the information prior to the video. This is not about no sovereign citizen this is not about no i hate government this ain't about all that stupid stuff ladies and gentlemen this is about you learning the truth about what's going on hey what's going on okay this is all about that take a look they give you the case law go and look up the cases prove that what they're saying is true that's all that's what I would do. This is 388 pages, people. 388 pages of research that was done for you, for free. This doesn't cost you anything. Everybody says, where should I start? I'm going to tell you to go start with S-E-D-M. Go start with them. They'll give you the whole basic history. And taxes? Oh, God, that's all they do is talk about taxes. Go there. Go there, go there, go there. Okay? And look, directed and control using franchisees, illegal enforcement upon non residents. They will give you the whole list. The whole list. The list of nothing but the list. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I do have to get ready. I have a document that I do have to finish proofreading because the. Uh, client and the other respondents have been waiting for my response. So I got to take care of that. So y'all take care. Thank y'all for letting me talk to y'all about racism. And have a good day, okay, everyone? I, I really am going to title this video Racism, even though it wasn't nothing about racism. Because that's what they said Stephen A. was talking about is racism. And he wasn't saying anything about race. And he wasn't putting anybody down. He was just motivating youngsters people that he couldn't relate to because Stephen is pretty much just a little bit older than I am. And being that the case, um, when I say he's a little bit older than I am, I think he's less than 10 years older than I am. But being that be the case, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen was talking to a culture. He wasn't talking to you. Okay? He was talking to a culture. He was motivating a culture. That's all it was, was about culture. There's this culture of looking at everybody else and blaming everybody else for everything that's happening to you. That's what he was talking about. I just don't know why people didn't get it. Probably still won't get it even after all of this. Hey, take care of yourselves, everybody. I gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Adios, arrivederci, sayonara. Uh, you know, all that good stuff. When we gonna get to the good part?